We're Grand Junior High School, and you're watching Friday Night Frenzy, baby! <laughs> It's Friday Night Frenzy, presented by Tim's Auto Glass. Hey everyone, how you doing? Welcome on into Friday Night Frenzy, sponsored by Tim's Auto Glass. He's Mike, the guy who likes to wave, and yes. I'm Troy Lynch. And Mike, I'm pretty sure the saying goes like this, first to worst, second to best. Is that correct? I think so. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Kinda. First to worst, second to best, sure. Yeah. Why not? Well, you know, week one of football is still, uh, I mean, week one was solid, but week two is just what everybody's talking about right now. And everyone was playing. We had some great local games. And tonight's game at Stoker Stadium featured a rematch of the first round of last year's 4A state playoffs. The local rivals, we got to get right into it right now. Central and Fruta Monument, they were playing for some bragging rights and a first win of the season. So there's a lot at stake, Mike, right now. Stay with me. Warriors have one thing that the Wildcats don't, and that's a six foot six tight end going to LSU next year. Hauls it in, and you know what? He's not going down easy. It takes Come a on, horde man. to bring Come him on, down. Man. Yeah, that's going to set Central up beautifully in the red zone. Michael Go, he knows it's go time. Finds a wide open Patrick Courtney, who was able to waltz his way into the end zone. Warriors strike first. It's seven nothing in the first quarter. Now it's Fruit's turn for some offense. Cade Besser says, "Psych, that's the wrong ball handler." Fools everyone and their mom, and he scrambles for a big gain. And there was a flag for a late hit out of bounds, so the Wildcats pick up an extra 15 yards. They get to the goal line, and Bessert finishes the job, punches it in, and that's going to tie the game. And Coach Cameron Ross, he's loving what he's seeing, but he hasn't seen anything yet. Next quarter, Central sniffing the red zone. Go wants a touchdown. He's going to toss it up. But Josh Henry steals it away with an INT at the goal line. What a play. Mike, you might see that later in the show. A lot of weather delays tonight. The Wildcats holding on to a 28-21 lead late in the fourth quarter. So we're going to have the final score on WestonSlopeNow.com. Hey, let's take a trip down to Delta, shall we? The Panthers opening up their season against the Thornton Trojans, and it was ugly from the start. Those Panthers strike quick and fast. Nolan Bynum to Kula Moo. He says, move over defense. <laughs> There's a truck coming through later. Bynum looking to pass and brings it in for the quarterback keeper. And watch this. He's just brought down just short of the end zone, and that would set the Panthers' first score as we see here. Bynum decides to do it himself. Panthers up 7-0, and they would not look back. Next drive stalls out for the Trojans, forced to punt, and oopsie, Somebody should have blocked him. Brandon Butler blocks it like a man. Whoa. And the Panthers on offense again. This time, well, let's just follow the scrum. Follow that O line up the gut. Panthers up 14 0. Later, it's Ethan Gonzalez looking to pass for the Trojans. And the pass gets tipped, and that is Panthers ball. Hunter nice. Hughes comes down with a pick. And if you guessed that this would set up a Panthers score, you would be guessing correctly. This time, Ooh. Nolan Bynum looking deep, throws Ooh, kind of across nice. his body on the run to a wide open Nathan Workman. Panthers go 50 yards very quickly. Next Panthers possession. It's Bynum looking deep as he rushes in his face. He's and so good. He's not worried about that. Oh. He gets it up and kissed by the sun. And oh, hey, look at that. There's Gage Lockhart. Panthers win big at home. 42 to nothing. Delta looking really good already. All right. You can tell the Grand Junction. Fans were happy for some Thursday night action. Against yeah, the so we're going to take it to the Olathe. Pirates against the Basalt Longhorns, and as you can see right here, Aletha, a uh, little struggle early on. And uh, take a look at the Basalt Longhorns. That's a nice five yards and out, and they get it out of bounds. So they're not done, though. They're back on the attack, and they get it. Woo, nice tackle right there. So they're going to pick up the first down. They're still gunning for it. Oh, there's the fake play. Goes right up the middle for the score, and... You could tell that they were happy with that. So Olathe, need, they need to try to get something going, am I right? All right, they get a nice five and out. They get a first down right here. They're working it. They're making it happen. All right, there is nobody uh, working there, though. So Olathe, they're kind of struggling against Basalt. They were fantastic last year, and they're just showing it again right now. That's a nice gain right up the middle. They're going to pass it this time. Going deep. What happens? He's wide open. He's not going to. Does he get into the end zone, Mike? It looks like he no, did. You were there, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. He was just short, and here it comes. Right up the gut. So it looks like Basalt just running away with this one. And we will also have this final score right here 29 to 7. Olathe couldn't get the job done. Basalt, they go to 1 0 on the season. Well, you can tell the Grand Junction fans were happy for some Thursday night action against the Indians. Montrose with an early pick six, as you're going to see right here. 
but the junction was able to march down the field and put up three 17-yard knuckleball field goal for the Tigers, and it's four-point game. Then after that, it seemed like both teams were trading turnovers. The Indians fumbled a handoff, and Grand Junction able to get on top of it and on, in midfield. But then they give it right back. Cole Simmons with the pressure on A.J. Mariz. Fourth throw, and Eli Evans comes down with it and gets some yardage after the fact. Finally brought down at the 30. That would set up a one-yard touchdown for the Indians. They go up 14 to three. All right, let's try this again. Marie's on the move, breaks the tackle and finds some space, chucks it up, but it's a bird. It's a play. No, it's Evans again. Second interception in the first in the first quarter, and he's brought down immediately. This time, Montrose does what they do best: get to the goal line and give up, to give it to the captain Cole Simmons, his second touchdown of the game. So the Tigers trying to go beast mode, bringing out the Skittles, and you know what? It works. Cameron. Right breaks up the reverse. Ball is loose and he gets on top of it. Taste the rainbow, Montrose. If you go right, you can't go wrong. We're running out of time in the first half. Tigers down 21 to 3. Mariz doesn't see anyone open, so he uses his legs. Nice moves, takes a hit and gets out of bounds with 14 seconds left. Coach Mike Circo trying to draw up a play. They go back to Mariz, but the Montrose defense was too good. Tigers stopped before the half and the Montrose defense stood tall the rest of the game. The Indians get the 35 to 3 win, improving to 2 and 0 on the season. All right, let's take it to Grand Valley. Kent and Denver Sun Devils take on the Cardinals at their house in Parachute, Colorado. Barely in the first quarter, and Sun Devils quarterback Alec Romo Nichols, he hands it off to Matthew Redmond for an effortless 25-yard-plus field goal. I wish my job looked that easy. The Sun Devils, they go on to the extra, they get the extra point at 7-0. Kent Denver and the Cardinals, they have an answer, or do they? After the snap, the quarterback is surrounded by a sea of white, and red pressure launches a pass. It's intercepted. Now the Devils, they're up, and they're trying to drive it home. There's snap balls off, and way off, and it's another intercept. Back-to-back -back interceptions, to be exact. Seems like no one wants the ball, Mike. A little more into the second quarter, though, of Romo Nichols looks left, and Redman, he's wide open. Open. He puts it into second gear. Five yards, 10, 20. I can't count. Can't, neither can the camera guy. And Redmond, he goes down to the three. Cardinals hold the Devils back and force the field goal. Now it's the Cardinals' turn, and they air it out once again. It's going to be snagged by Declan Sohn. Yet another interception. We just have it. And that, that's three so far, folks. The Sun Devils take the shutout win. 26 nothing. But we got to check out some other scores from teams around the Valley. Palisade was in Durango tonight and pulled out a tough 25 to 18 win against the Demons. Coach Romano, he said that Durango's a playoff team and he was able to lead the Bulldogs to a 25 18 win to start the season. Rough night for Glenwood Springs. They weren't able to put up any points against Holy Family and the Tigers get their first win of the season 29 nada. Oof, the Demons, they got baptized tonight. Hey, check out the Hotchkiss score. It wasn't close. They put up 50 against Clear Creek, and gold diggers couldn't find gold. Silver, coal, you name it. They got nothing tonight. Bulldogs needed that win, though they improved to 1-1 one one on the year. All right, let's take you to some 1A action out in Steamboat, and it was a good game. The Sailors ride off into the sunset with a 21-13 win, and the Bruins start the season with a loss. And another shutout. Nothing doing for Paonia tonight in the Bird Bowl. Falcons too much to handle at home with a 33-0 win. All right, let's check out our fan of the day, and it goes to the Grand Junction student section. Go. Last night, they were loud. They were fun. They got to check out the dedication, the face paint. Look at these guys. You can barely see that man with all the camo. This person's just in a full black morph suit. That's commitment. Probably hard to breathe in. These girls, full send for the boys? Mike, what does that even mean? I don't... I. Is that some millennial slang? Maybe. I think maybe it's like a full pass, full rush, maybe? Like maybe like a full, full send. Full, like send. all out blitz. An all out blitz okay. for the boys. You know, we're going to go out with an all out blitz. We'll keep it with football <laughs> terms. All right. I'm not sure anyone can beat last week's fan of the day. Just the cutest baby you've ever seen. And Mike, you said that you were never that adorable. No. But you know what? I think we have some baby pictures of us that <laughs> no. the people at home can see. We need to show them how adorable we were. Can we pull yeah. that up right now? Oh Here yeah. We Here we go. Ooh. I'm on the left. Mike, yeah. you were you were definitely that adorable man. Oh man, yeah. It's, uh, you know, what do you know about the Smurfs? Not much. <laughs> Not much. Okay. But you got a baseball bat and everything, man. Yeah, you knew you were going to be here. Yeah, yeah. I'm just sitting on the beach, happy as a clam. Yeah. All, All right. right. Now let's get into the best plays we saw today. 
here we go as they come out. This was a, nope, this was, ow. Yeah, watch this. You just take a hit, slow motion, and he just comes Ooh. in oh. and lands on his head. The fumble on the ball, they would recover. He would get up, and uh, he would be okay on all right, let's take you to this second play. Uh, this was a no-go for Central because the man, Josh Henry, playing defense, stops his prey, wins the jump ball to get the interception, and keeping the Warriors off the scoreboard. I don't know how this is number two, but what could possibly be number one, Mike? We're going to find out. Yeah, Troy, let's go over to it, back to the game. It's uh, a quarterback with the rush in his face, throws it up into the sun, and in for the score. Watch this again as the defense just puts a bunch of pressure on him. He doesn't worry about that. Up in the air and kissed by the sun. That's good for seven. All right, real quick, we have a final score update. Fruita Monument High School taking away the win from Central, 35-21. to 21. Wow. We just got an update to the Wildcats. They get their first win of the season. And Central, a team that made the playoffs last year, they're really missing their former head coach and head starting quarterback because right now they're 0-2 on the season. So a rough start for them, but yeah. I think they can turn it around. Sure, of course. Yeah, absolutely. Course, yeah. All right, so we just want to say thank you so much for watching. This was up last week, two of Friday Night Friends. Is yeah. it a book, Mike? How we, how we it was a frenzy. I didn't have time to put on a tie. Yeah, so I know. Wow. You know, there's a lot frenzy. of games to cover, but hopefully we can give you all the final scores. So make sure you head on over to westernslopenow.com if you want all of the updated information. I know we couldn't get to every single game, so we're just trying to give you the best coverage we possibly can. But you know what? He's Mike Kretz. I'm Troy Lynch. Thanks so much for watching. Make sure you come back next Friday night and hang out with us here on Friday Night Frenzy. And good night and good football.